Hi, good morning, everybody. Okay, I am here this morning to talk to you about getting things wrong. Now, is there anyone here who enjoys getting things wrong? I can just about see you. We've got one in the front, thank you. <laughs> oh, we've got another one, brilliant. Well, I like getting things wrong. Not all the time, of course, but I really love going in the wrong direction, finding wrong solutions, and even being told that I'm wrong. But this talk is not all about me, this talk is about business. And it's why I believe that there's never been a more important moment in history for businesses to start thinking wrong, taking different directions, and finding new solutions. So let me give you a bit of context. So I work in the area of corporate responsibility, and that means that we help companies to try and balance their profit with their impact on society and the environment. So imagine me, I go into boardrooms across India and I speak to Indian companies and I say to them, hey, you know what? I think you should think a little less about profit. And as soon as I say that, the majority of people kind of go, mm, well, yeah, that doesn't sound quite right. So for me to even work in this line of business, for me to work in corporate responsibility, I have to really accept from the beginning that a lot of people think what I'm saying is wrong. And this is never more obvious to me than when I speak to MBAs, investors, some corporate executives, who invariably tell me something like this line, which I have heard a million times. This is from Milton Friedman, a very famous economist, and he said, the one and only social responsibility of business is to increase its profits. So okay, I get that. So what he's saying is, if a business does what it does really, really well and makes money, then everything else is going to take care of itself. Right? Okay. But what's interesting is, this has been what people have been saying since the 1970s. Milton Friedman said this in the 70s. Now, I know none of you can remember, maybe a couple of people can remember the 70s, but none, most of you can't. I can't, even before my time. It's a really long time ago. And let's just think seriously, since the 1970s, the world has been changing at a rate we have never experienced before. Global population has more than doubled. We have so much technology in our hands that we couldn't have even envisaged in the 1970s, in the palm of our hands. And what that means is that all these issues that seem very far away in that time that you would read in the newspaper or in National Geographic, we are talking about them all the time. <coughs> Things like the refugee crisis, like um, Black Lives Matter, like poverty, all these issues are now in our hands. And what, is, what that technology is also enabling us to do is have everyday revolutions, cross borders all over the world. So we're able to connect, we're able to sign petitions about Delhi's pollution. We're even able to campaign about Maggie. We're all able to get involved with the, the Syrian refugees, with uh, garment workers in Bangladesh. Experts from the UN think that the biggest threat to human life on the planet right now is not terrorism, it's not war, it's not disease, but it's climate change. We didn't even have the phrase climate change back then. Even more important than that, companies these days, we don't even think about this, but companies today are bigger and more important than some nations and government. I think you probably know Walmart, big US brand with stores all over the world. Walmart has 2.2 million employees. That's about the size of Qatar. If you take the dependence of those employees, that's all the, their families, all the people who are dependent directly on Walmart for their livelihoods, you've got about 8 million people. That's the size of Hong Kong, nearly the size of Switzerland, directly dependent on Walmart. Add into that all of their suppliers around the world and all the people who work for their suppliers and all of their dependents. And suddenly you've got this huge number of people, much bigger than a country, who are dependent on Walmart. And they're absolutely not the only one. Apple's economic output is about the size of Oman. Amazon has as many users as the population of Brazil. Vodafone has as many subscribers as everyone in the USA. And Nestle trades in 196 countries, which, if you know how many countries there are in the world, that's Every country. That's all the countries Nestle is in. So I think about this, and I think about the world that we live in, and I think about how important these companies are, and then I think about this statement that their only responsibility is to increase their profits. And I go, that is crazy. 
that doesn't make sense to me anymore. And the longer that companies believe that this is the correct way to behave, the more they are jeopardizing all of our futures every single day. So if this has been considered the correct way to do business, I think it's about time we start to get things wrong. I think we need to start differently, I think differently, and start finding solutions that start to balance out the needs of the world with the needs of business. And the great news for companies is that you don't have to choose between profit, society, and environment. You can prioritize all three at the same time. It's called the triple bottom line. So what I'm going to show you very quickly is a few examples of how that's absolutely possible. So don't shake your heads yet. Um, this is Unilever. This is Paul Pullman. Paul Pullman uh, is the CEO of Unilever globally. On his very first day in the job, he declared that Unilever was no longer going to post quarterly profit statements. Now, if you know, businesses post quarterly profit statements to keep their shareholders happy. And one of the biggest jobs of a CEO is to keep shareholders happy. But his belief is that if he's focusing on shareholders and he's focusing on quarterly profits, then he can't build a sustainable business for the future that thinks about the environment and society. So he went out there to the market and he said this, and everyone said he was crazy. They said, that's a terrible decision. That's wrong. You can't do it. And do you know what happened? Pretty much nothing. <laughs> nothing went wrong. Nothing crashed. They continued to post great results. Their 2015 results were ahead of the market, and actually their share price stabilized. So by going completely against the grain, by kind of just thinking wrong and saying, you know what, I'm going to try something different, he's managed not only to make the company more financially resilient, but he's also made it one of the most sustainable and responsible companies in the world. This is Shahi Exports. This is someone I've worked with for many years. They're an amazing company, and they like to think wrong every now and again as well. So they are a garment exporter, India's largest ready-made garment exporter, and they sell clothes to retailers all over the world. Now, in this business, if you know anything about manufacturing, one of the most important things that you need to be aware of is keeping your costs as low as possible. It's high volume, low value, and you have to get those margins. And that's why you often see that garment manufacturers, garment factories have a lot of um, exploitation, You'll have heard of sweatshops. That's because they're squeezing, 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 squeezing to the point where it's just irresponsible. Shahi said, no, we don't want to do that. Forget it. We don't want to stick to that rule. We're going to spend more money. So what they embarked on was training their workers in all kinds of social skills. So in self-confidence, financial awareness, health, nutrition, all the things that are going to make their unskilled, labor, unskilled women laborers um, become socially empowered women. And what they found was, it obviously cost them a lot of money. This stuff doesn't come for free. But what they found was for every, in fact, not they found, in fact, what um, Yale University found when they did a study on this was that for every dollar Shahi spent on social empowerment, they made $4.20 back on returns for the business from productivity, better leadership, higher retention. So what they actually did was say, we don't believe in the rules of the game. We're going to throw them out the window. And they're making more money, and they've got socially empowered workers at the same time. OK, last example, my favorite. This is one of my favorite brands in the world. You might not have heard of Patagonia. I don't know if you have. They're a, an outdoor clothing and equipment company from the USA. They have stores all over the US. Now, on Black Friday, not sure, do you know Black Friday? It's, um, in the US, it's the biggest shopping day of the year. It's when all the money gets spent in the US. So a couple of years ago, on Black Friday, Patagonia put this ad out says, don't buy this jacket. And it's not even a joke. Next to it, if you can see, they've got um, their initiative, which is about reduce, repair, reuse, and recycle. And what they were saying to consumers was, you know what? Every time we buy clothes we don't need, we're just killing the environment. The waste is outrageous. So don't buy a jacket you don't need. Bring your old jacket in and we'll fix it for you. And right now, across the US, you can take your old clothes back to Patagonia, and they will for free fix them all up, good as new, and tell you, please don't buy a new one. So of course, this initiative for them was to try and get a sustainability message out to consumers to say, we care about the environment, and so should you. The result on their business was that in the same year, the 12 months following this advert, their revenues went up by almost a third. So not quite what they were aiming for, but another example of how any marketing person would not be very happy to see this ad come across their desk. It just sounds wrong. But sometimes by going wrong, by taking a risk, by feeling some 
some new directions out, you can, realize, you can realize the ambition of balancing your profit, society, and environment. And that's kind of what I want to, that's what I want to leave you with today. That I believe that this is possible. I believe that there are companies out there who are able to do this. And more importantly, the companies that are not able to think like this, to go wrong, to think differently, are going to increasingly find themselves left behind by more resilient, more adaptable, and more contemporary business models. So you guys, you're about to go out into the world. And I've been on campus since yesterday. I've had the pleasure of meeting some of your amazing fellow students. You guys are capable of anything. You're going to be the leaders of this country. And that means you're going to be the leaders of the world. And when you go out there, believe me, there are going to be a lot of people who tell you the correct way to do things. They're going to tell you, no, this is, this is how we've always done it. These are the rules of the game. This is how business works. And what I want you to do um, is have the strength to question everything. There will be people who tell you that your ideas about the world, that your ideas about how we need to think about society and the environment are wrong. And that's the moment I want you to throw convention out the window and go for it. Just go for it. Think about wrong ideas. I want you to fall in love with the possibility of getting things wrong because if we think we know what's right, if we think we know the correct way to do things, we'll just keep doing it the same way because that's how we've always done it. If we start being unafraid of trying new things and getting things wrong, then I really believe that you guys taking this with you will be the generation that changes our world forever and for the better. Thank you.